SpaceX is taking a big step forward for humanity. It's not just the latest technology that will shape the future of commercial spaceflight, but also the promise of a new record-breaking reusability on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. That's what an astronaut discovered after this historic spaceflight. Find out all about it in today's episode of In Our Studio. But before we get started, let's subscribe to this channel to stay updated on the latest space news. SpaceX, as we know, had an incredible three quarters in 2024, marked by record-breaking achievements. So far, the company has launched its 90th Falcon 9 mission. In addition, the company has launched a Falcon Heavy rocket in two spacecraft, bringing the total number of launches to 93. So far, last year's record was 98 versions, including 91 Falcon 9 rocket launches, five Falcon Heavy launches, and two spacecraft test flights. This year, SpaceX is targeting 148 launches, but that target is severely limited by regulators. However, as a rule, the FAA, despite unreasonable fines and delays, SpaceX continues to show the ability to make its enemies bow in awe. That's exactly what SpaceX did with its five-day Polaris Dawn mission. The mission was notable for its many historic activities, including the first commercial spacewalk, the first test of SpaceX's new EVA suit, and a climb higher above Earth than any previous human spaceflight since the last Apollo astronauts set foot on the moon in 1972. On September 15, the four astronaut Dragon Resilience crew returned to Earth and splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico. Three days later, the capsule returned to Cape Canaveral aboard the recovery ship Shannon. Before we continue, subscribe, like, and share so that we are more enthusiastic about updating the next video. Okay, let's start. Under the camera's gaze, its elasticity looks like a perfectly toasted marshmallow. According to Jared Isaacman, Polaris commander, there won't be much work required on the vehicle before launch. That's our spacecraft, the resistance of the Dragon crew. It looks like it needs some adjustments before the next launch. We are very grateful to the mission control and recovery teams for getting us there safely. One of the maintenance requirements is to disassemble and reassemble the aft fuselage made of ablative material before the next flight. This process is essential to ensuring the safety and performance of the spacecraft on future missions. One of the most important elements of any spacecraft is the thermal protection system. The heat shield is a key component. The heat shield protects the spacecraft from the massive destructive forces of re-entry into the atmosphere. An ablative heat shield, like the one used by SpaceX on Dragon's main heat shield, works by shrinking some of the material itself to turn it into a gas and burning it. This removes the accumulated heat from the capsule. By comparison, a heat-absorbing heat shield, like the one used on the spacecraft, is designed to absorb heat and radiate it away without burning the material. The thickness of the Dragon Pod's heat shield allows it to partially function as a heat shield, but its outer layer will still be removed, reducing the thickness of the heat shield. This explains why the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule appeared to burn up badly during re-entry. In the future, the vehicle will prove itself worthy of many more flights. It is possible that NASA and SpaceX are considering extending the lifespan of the Crew Dragon spacecraft from 5 to 15 flights. The initiative is part of an extensive certification process that will include rigorous testing of all components of the spacecraft. NASA officials said the recovery campaign will be conducted to assess whether the spacecraft can safely conduct additional flights. The process will include evaluating components that have been exposed to the space environment over time. SpaceX is currently conducting qualification testing of each component of the Dragon spacecraft to determine how many flights the spacecraft can perform. Of the four Dragons in the fleet, Endeavour has flown the most, having flown its fifth flight during the Crew-8 mission, which marked the current operational limit. Fresh off Crew-8, NASA and SpaceX plan to analyze the spacecraft's various components that have been exposed to the space environment from top to bottom over the years. While many of the Crew Dragon's smaller components have been replaced, the capsule's main structure, the welds, main radials, and pressure body, remain original. Demand for Dragon life extensions has grown since SpaceX ended production of new Crew Dragon astronaut capsules in 2022, limiting the fleet to four Crew Dragons, adding urgency to the development of a potential successor to the astronaut capsule, Starship. That presents new challenges as the company learns to maintain its fleet 
and quickly resolve unforeseen issues without compromising its commitment to astronaut missions. There's a life cycle issue. As you start using it for the third, fourth, fifth time, you start to see different things, said Garrett Reisman, a retired NASA astronaut and former SpaceX executive who now advises crewed spaceflight companies. Issues SpaceX is adept at quickly identifying these issues and moving quickly to fix them, Reisman added, referring to a 2021 investigation in which SpaceX discovered and repaired within months a leaking toilet inside a Crew Dragon capsule that had twice carried people. SpaceX's ability to reuse Dragon and even push it to its limits is evidenced by what they did with the C-207 Resilience, which previously served as the Polaris Dawn. This spacecraft is known for its successful mission history with three flights. When we talk about the C-207, we can't help but mention its historic first flight on November 16, 2020, which marked the first of six commercial flights certified by NASA, including major missions to the International Space Station, the ISS, in private space flights. It is also the first private spacecraft certified by NASA to successfully dock with the International Space Station. The previous successful launch on May 30, 2020, was the Demo-2 test with a Dragon spacecraft named Endeavour. On September 16, 2021, Resilience continued to reach the next level with Inspiration-4, the first all-private, all-civilian orbital mission. After Inspiration-4, we have Polaris Dawn, which is notable for many firsts. First, the flight marked the first time SpaceX had two of its employees launch on a spacecraft. Gillis and Menon are the company's chief space operations engineers, the former overseeing astronaut training and the latter serving at mission control. In addition to his mission specialist role, Menon also served as the crew's physician less than 24 hours after reaching initial orbit. The crew achieved their first goal, climbing farther above Earth than any previous human spaceflight since the last Apollo astronaut set foot on the moon in 1972 reaching a distance of 1,408.1 kilometers, 880.4 miles. The Polaris Dawn crew broke the record set 58 years ago by NASA's Gemini 11 crew by 22 miles, 35 kilometers. Gillis and Menon also shared a new record for the farthest distance traveled by a woman from Earth. On the second day of the mission, the Polaris Dawn astronauts and a four-person contingent helped set a new record for the most people in Earth orbit at one time. Three newly launched Russian Soyuz crew members, three Chinese space station tycoons, and nine astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station totaled 19 people outside the planet. Petit, Gillis, and Menon became the 618th, 619th, and 620th people to orbit Earth and the 705th through 707th people to fly in space. Isaac Mann, meanwhile, was the 568th in orbit and the 588th in space when he launched on Inspiration4. At the same time, the recruits are the 50th, 51st, and 52nd, 52nd SpaceX astronauts to fly on Dragon. On the third day of the mission, Isaac Mann, Poteet, Gillis, and Menon became the first four people to be exposed to the vacuum of space at the same time as Dragon was decompressing in preparation for the first commercial spaceflight. Isaac Mann and Gillis performed for the first time in SpaceX's new EVA suits, or let's not forget the first violin in space, performed by SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis via SpaceX's Starlink satellite network. Gillis played Ray's theme from Star Wars, The Force Awakens, composed by John Williams. After being broadcast on Earth, Gillis's solo was mixed with various recordings of orchestral performances to create harmony of resilience. In addition, the crew conducted 36 experiments with 31 partners, including NASA, Johns Hopkins University, and the U.S. Air Force Academy. Polaris Dawn is the first mission in the Polaris program that will demonstrate new technologies, conduct extensive research, and ultimately lead to SpaceX's first crewed Starship flight. On September 16th, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk shared an inspiring photo showing the 18-year journey from the failure of the first Falcon flight to the success of the historic Polaris Dawn mission. What a journey. It's been 18 years, and look how far SpaceX has come, from humble beginnings to today, becoming a leader in future space exploration.
I can't wait to see where SpaceX goes in the next 18 years. Elon Musk set his sights. The first unmanned spacecraft to Mars will launch in two years, and the first manned flight to Mars will take place between 2030 and 2032. If all goes according to plan, in the next 18 years, we will have built up a massive infrastructure and personnel. Of course, everything significant starts with a small step, and SpaceX has taken a small but significant step forward with the first commercial spaceflight with Polaris. He tested his latest suit, the EVA suit, in building a base on the moon, and a city on Mars will require thousands of spacesuits. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be an important step towards scalable spaceflight design for future long-duration missions. The vacuum environment of the Van Allen radiation belts allows SpaceX to collect a wealth of data on what to expect during an actual EVA. The SpaceX EVA suit, when viewed from the outside, looks like a larger version of the suit inside the vehicle. The EVA suit, a pressurized garment worn during spacecraft launch and landing, is not designed to function in the vacuum of space. The suit performed flawlessly during the recent spacewalk, and we look forward to updates from SpaceX on the data collected during the test. With its extensive experience in space hardware development and abundant resources, SpaceX should not rule out the possibility of mobilizing a new team to develop EVA suits for NASA based on modifications to existing suits. As you know, NASA has selected Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace to build and maintain the next generation of spacesuits. The Axiom suits will be used during NASA's Artemis lunar missions, and the next generation Collins suits will be used for the International Space Station. NASA hopes to deploy these new suits on the ISS by 2026, despite the huge investment of $3.5 billion. NASA's current plans face more challenges than ever before. In June, Collins said he would be leaving the program. According to sources, this was because he was running late, experiencing high stress, and was spending his time on Zebus. This may be a smart move by the company to avoid major losses due to the side effects of a fixed-price contract or to ask NASA for additional funding if needed. It is also unclear how Collins' removal will affect the development schedule of the spacesuits. In theory, NASA does not need to restart XEVAS immediately. The functional requirements of the two Axiom and Collins suits are very, very close. So if Colin leaves, the national agency could ask Axiom to start working on its next platform. However, since its motto is still redundant, NASA will most likely look for a new partner to compete with Axiom. In this case, one possible candidate could be SpaceX, which has already tested its new spacesuit on the private Polaris Dawn mission. In August 2021, Elon also expressed his desire to collaborate with NASA to develop an EVA suit for the lunar landing. We are sure that so far he has not given up on his desire and this could be one of his main motivations to perfect the suit to be much better than the old NASA suit. NASA's Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or EMU, has been carried by astronauts on the ISS since 1981, but it weighs over 100 pounds, 45 kilograms, without life support. In general, NASA's EVA suits are bulky, difficult to put on and take off, and extremely uncomfortable. The fingers of the astronaut gloves are so difficult to manipulate that NASA held a competition to try to come up with a better, easier to use design. In the space shuttle era, as the number of astronauts increased, NASA opted to make spacesuits in different sizes. The idea was that astronauts could mix and match torsos, arms, and legs to create a spacesuit that fit them, but this didn't work in practice. These pieces only came in a few different sizes, meaning astronauts had to choose the size of the glove, for example, that best fit their hand size. However, for some rigid components, such as the upper body and rear access hatch, this was a bigger problem. Many women's bodies are different from men's, with women having wider hips, narrower shoulders, and so on. This made the spacesuits even more uncomfortable for female astronauts. NASA has recognized that one of the problems with current EMUs is that they limit which astronauts can perform EVAs. In contrast, the Polaris suits are designed to be almost completely flexible, allowing astronauts to move around more comfortably. For the Polaris Dawn mission, SpaceX's suits were custom-made for each crew member. However, SpaceX plans to make the suits more scalable and easier to manufacture in the future. This is driven by its motivation to be able to produce millions of combinations of bases on the Moon and Mars.
therefore the design must accommodate different body types. So it is not inconceivable that SpaceX's suits would fit professional astronauts. In this case, things would be easier because NASA has measurements of the astronauts. Thus, a suitable suit can be created without their physical presence. In any case, the presence of astronauts in the place made it possible to verify that the range of movement is not limited since the shape of the body changes during movement. In addition, SpaceX's latest suit is highly praised for its modern technology, which will certainly provide an extraordinary experience for astronauts in space. Here we have many different resources available. Chris Trigg, SpaceX's head of spacesuits, said at a conference in 2022 that there is a thermal material that we finally use in the boots that were actually developed for Falcon and Dragon, and it is used in the middle of the stadium. Falcon Dragon Trunk. Trigg also explained the new head-up display inside the helmet, which allows astronauts to see data on the internal temperature, humidity, and pressure of their suits. The screen also displays a mission clock to monitor the duration of a particular EVA task. The outstanding feature is the comfort and convenience that the suit brings, not inferior to what IVA does. This comfort excites Scott kidd Patet, who is the mission pilot of SpaceX's Polaris Dawn mission. The suit fits like a glove, so comfortable that it is difficult not to micro-sit between simulation sessions. I think the visor is one of my favorite aspects. It's the only EVA suit ever made with a single-layer mask. Jared Isaacman says his team spent weeks testing different materials on the left arm versus the right arm, different rotators on the left arm, and different wrist mechanisms. It was a lot of trial and error, but it was definitely worth it since spacewalks typically require astronauts to perform EVAs and work on or inspect the outside of their Crew Dragon or Starship spacecraft. SpaceX's first priority was to make sure the base would function well in space and that the suit would allow astronauts to perform tasks that require good finger and limb dexterity. Without immediately removing it, the newly designed suit remains flexible under pressure, maintaining mobility, namely excellent finger dexterity. Excellent mobility and flexibility, even down to the knees and waist, keeping the pressure inside the suit low, 5.1 PSI to prevent it from ballooning, making mobility easier. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you, and we hope to see you again next time.